is always faithful. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 40. We're just continuing our study on uh, the book of Luke. And you'll notice the Prince of Peace being highlighted throughout the entire Bible. And I'm going to clarify some of that here today. Amen? Thank you, Lord. When you have it, say amen. amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 21 through 40. Amen. All right. Everybody there? All right. <clears throat> Starting at verse 21. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb Shall be, called, shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought him, brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to, and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. And there was a prophetess, prophetess, which is the accurate title for a woman prophet. Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer day and night. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak to him to all, speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of the Lord was upon him. Today's message is titled, Christ Revealed. Christ Revealed, for those taking notes. Christ Revealed. And point number one is the revelation of salvation. It said, the name Jesus, if you don't know, means Jehovah is salvation. Mm -hmm. So his, his name means salvation. He is salvation. There are three ceremonies that take place here. The first one is the circumcision, right? And for those that do not know, I went over this two weeks ago, but I'll touch on it real quick. Circumcision was a phys the physical sign that a man was part of God's covenant, the covenant that he had made with Abraham back in Genesis 17, right? So the second ceremony is um, the purification ceremony. The purification ceremony took, days four, took place 40 days after a male child was born and 80 days after a female child is born. The woman, right, that gave birth to the child, she could work in and around her house 
uh, be around family members and stuff like that, but she couldn't take part in any religious ceremonies or be in any temple. So after the 40 days were up, that's when she can go and present her offering to the Lord in the temple, right? And that Lord, that, that, that offering to the Lord should have been um, a lamb, which was for the burnt offering, and a dove or a pigeon for the sin offering, right? And the, 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 the priest would take the offering that the woman would bring, and he would sacrifice it. And after him sacrificing the animal that she had brought, he would declare her clean according to the law of Moses. And if a lamb was too expensive at this time, as we read in the text, they, they can bring a, a, a pigeon or two, two, two turtle doves, which is the case here, which would signify that a person cannot afford a lamb. So they would bring the, the two birds. Amen? So that now the third ceremony was the dedication of the child in which every firstborn, like the scripture said, had to be dedicated to the Lord. Again, as stated in Exodus chapter 13, verse 2, which says, Every firstborn of Israel, both man and beast, belongs to the Lord. So Mary and Joseph, right, now they're in the temple. They're there with their baby, Jesus, and they're offering up the, the, the they're presenting their offer for the offering for the purification process. And they also had to bring an offering, listen to this, I want you to pay attention, to redeem the child back from the Lord. All right, pay attention. Every firstborn child had to be redeemed from the Lord for five shekels. Every firstborn animal and person needed to be dedicated to the Lord, as we read in the text. Every firstborn animal and person had to be dedicated to the Lord. The animal you would sacrifice. The child you would go to the temple and redeem them back from the Lord. And I'm going to explain. Exodus 13, 14 says, When the time comes for your sons to ask uh, what this means, you will say to him, By a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. They had to redeem their firstborn child to remind them that God had first redeemed them out of slavery from Egypt, right? And that the child that they were redeeming actually belonged to the Lord and that that baby was indeed a gift from God. So while Jesus is being dedicated in the temple, a man named Simeon walks up and he takes the child into his arms and he begins to praise God. Luke said that he was a righteous and dedicated man unto the Lord. He was and was waiting for the consolation of Israel, which means the messianic hope. Translation, the, 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 the restoration of Israel as a nation. So the one who was to restore Israel was now present. One of the traditional Jewish prayers is, may I see the consolation of Israel. Every Jewish person prayed this before the, uh, the Messiah arrived, and even when he did. May I see the consolation of Israel. This prayer was answered right here for Simeon. For Simeon. This was his prayer also. And he saw Je when he saw Jesus in the temple, that prayer had been answered. The Holy Spirit, the scripture says, the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon and directed him into the temple, right? So it was the Spirit of God who had revealed to Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ, right? God's anointed one, Israel's Messiah. It was the Spirit of God who revealed to Simeon that that child that he was holding was indeed the Messiah, the consolation of Israel. You see, church, when we stand right in the sight of our Lord, right, because the Bible says that he was righteous and devout. He was right standing with the Lord and how the Lord saw him as right standing, right, to him. And his life was dedicated unto God. So he lived a life that God recognized, right, 
And because of the life that he lived unto the Lord, God blessed him and used him and even spoke to him clearly right here. God, like, like my wife was singing, God is always faithful to his word. Luke 137 says, the word of God will never fail. God kept his promise here with Simeon as we read in this text, right? Amen. Why? Because he's shown himself to be faithful in answering the prayer and, and that he told Simeon that he would not die unless he seen the Christ himself, the Savior, the consolation of Israel, the one who everyone was waiting for at this time. The restoration of Israel was now here, right in front of Simeon's face, in his hands. after a lifetime of waiting for the Messiah, after a lifetime of asking the Lord for the restoration to come upon the nation of Israel, he now holds the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice in his hands. I could only imagine the joy that Simeon was experiencing at this time. A man that knew his life was in God's hands now holds God in his. And his words of praise expressed that deep joy that he was experiencing. His praise in Latin is called nunc diminis, which means, now let's depart. He says, you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory of your people, Israel. The salvation which Simeon saw was not just for him and the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. He did not view the Messiah's coming and arrival as only benefiting him and, 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 and uh, Israel. The Messiah, Israel's king, who the scriptures testified would sit on the throne of the, his father David, was the light, and I want you to pay close attention from here on out, was the light of revelation to the Gentiles. Luke, Luke says, Luke was stating that from the very beginning, it has been God's plan to offer salvation to the Gentiles as well as the Jews. From the very beginning. Old Testament and New Testament. The distruth of these prophecies uh, that in the Old Testament, Simeon was aware of these prophecies. And his words reveal his knowledge of these Old Testament prophecies. Of a salvation that would be for the Gentiles as well as for Israel. I want you to keep in mind something. Prophecy is always, should always be in line with the word of God. Right? This right here is a prophetic proclamation that is directly in line with God's word. Prophets do not predict the future. I wanna highlight that, okay? Prophets do not predict the future. They are used by God as his mouthpiece to speak the truth of his word on his behalf. Make sense? Yeah. Confirming what is already known to be true in the scriptures, in his word. Simeon was a chosen vessel of God right here, confirming the truth of God's word to Joseph and Mary about salvation being for everyone. Psalms 98 verses 2 and 3 says, <clears throat> we know that Psalm is in the Old Testament, right? I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, plural, nations, mm -hmm. not singular, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. <clears throat> he is a light in the midst of darkness, amen? He is the hope in the midst of doubt. 
Isaiah 52 10 says, the Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, that all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God. Salvation did not just appear, like I said before, in the New Testament. It has always been God's plan from the very beginning. Amen. Simeon continues to bless Joseph and Mary by saying in verses 34 and 35, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own also, your own soul also, sorry, so that thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. Jesus Christ was the cause of many falling and rising, mm -hmm. is what he's saying here. The child was to be what the scripture calls the stone of stumbling, mm -hmm. right? The chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Many, meaning, many would stumble and fall over him. Pay attention. In other words, they would not notice him, right? They would not look for him. They would not study him. We can apply that to today. We will not study him. Many would not prefer him because he's not popular. Most will not choose to follow him. Most will not believe in him as being the, salva the very salvation that he offers us today. Many don't even acknowledge that he's the redeemer. <laughs> and being the redeemer of Israel, the consolation of Israel, the restoration of Israel, he can also, he has also been said to restore each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Right? They would reject him and the salvation he was offering. They would choose another way other than God. Wow, it's nothing new under the sun, right? The word does not change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can still, we can still apply this. Amen? The Old Testament is not irrelevant, as many say. It is not. And in them choosing what was right in their own eyes, those of us that have been around for a while know what the scripture says about that, right? Proverbs 12, 15 says, fools will think that their way is right. But the wise will listen to others. Therefore, they stump, they would stumble and fall over him because they would not listen to the message of salvation being preached by others. How can one know unless a preacher is sent? Amen. Amen. Like right here, right now, the Lord has sent a preacher to you, right? To deliver a word of salvation. So they would stumble over him as a stone that was lying in their path that they did not see. And others would rise because of him. They would not, they would, they would take notice, the ones that rise. They take notice of him. They choose to follow him. They choose to receive the message of salvation, right? And they believe that he is the salvation that he says and claims he is. Therefore, he would become their foundation, their rock, their chief cornerstone. Jesus. Christ, the son of the living God, will cause every person at some point in their life to make a decision. Amen. 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 God does not send anyone to hell. That choice is up to us. I want to clarify that. That is our choice. Right? Yes. We choose our path. Whether to follow and obey the word of God and acknowledge the call of salvation and answer it, or reject them, like the scripture says here, and fall away. They either, we would either, just like then, it's the same now. We either accept who he is and what he has done on the cross at Calvary for us and rise, or we fall because of our rejection of him, right? The falling and the rising is in reference to where we would spend eternity according to our response, right? You're either going to rise to heaven for eternity or we're either going to fall to, into hell for eternity. And I know that's a harsh, it may sound harsh, but it's the truth of God's word. 
Matthew 21, 42 says, the stone that the builders have ejected has become the cornerstone. The chief cornerstone, meaning what? He is the necessary piece that's needed to bring man to God. Hallelujah. Right? The corner, it connects to. He's the piece. He is what's needed to restore. He's the restoration, right, for the relationship of man with God so that we are reconciled back to our creator, our maker, our heavenly father. How he designed and created, he created us to have a relationship with us. That's why he created us, so that we can have a relationship with him and be right standing and dedicated unto him. First Peter 2, 7 and 8 says, one of the amazing things that I've learned here in this church, <clears throat> which I love, is that, which is very important, that scripture interprets scripture, right? First Peter 2, 7 and 8 says, the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Listen, he's going to say why. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Why? Verse 8. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. They're destined to stumble because of the rejection of salvation. Isaiah 53 Verses 3 to 5 says, he was despised and rejected by men. A, a man of sorrow was acquainted with grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be made healed. Mary witnessing her son, Jesus Christ, hanging on the cross, having been rejected by man. That was going to be the sword that pierces her soul, Luke says. Right? And for Mary to witness what was what, to witness that what he endured and him hanging on the cross was going to be devastating to her. That's what was going to pierce her heart, is what Simeon was saying here. Prophetic word, right? Coming in line with God's word because it was fulfilled. You see how prophecy works? <clears throat> and this was all part of God's plan from the beginning. That we, as a people, may be redeemed, set free from the bondage of sin. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from what? From the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. What am I saying? He took upon himself the penalty of sin which should have resulted in our death, our sin, right? And as a result of our sin, rightfully so, we should be going to hell. Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life only in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. The wages. What is a wage? Something that we earn. Right? When you work, at the end of the week, you expect your wages, right? For what? Something you've done. So the wages of sin is death. So how we live our life? If we live our life in a state as a slave to sin, bound, right, by the sin, our payment Rightfully so, should be going to hell, right? Mm -hmm. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
So now we have a shot, we have a chance. Now we have an opportunity to be right standing with the Lord and dedicate our life unto him, our hearts unto him. He became the substitutionary atonement, right? He who knew no sin became sin. He took upon his shoulders the sin of the world, giving everyone the opportunity to spend eternity with God. How? By responding to the salvation that he, had, that he was presenting to them. After Simeon said what he said to Joseph and Mary about Jesus, there came along a woman, the prophetess. A widow, again, listen, whose life was dedicated unto the Lord. You see how God uses dedicated people? Not perfect, but dedicated. You're going to make mistakes, but dedicated. Their heart was for God. And they had a reputation of their hearts being for the Lord. They had a reputation of being obedient to the word of the Lord. Her life was obedient, as the scripture says, with prayer and fasting, always being in the temple. As soon as it opened, she went there, praying and fasting unto the Lord. She walks up to them as Simeon is praising God for the child Jesus, acknowledging who this baby is. And she begins to give thanks to the Lord because the identity of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the salvation himself in the flesh was revealed. She takes now, she, now she has to take what she knows and the scripture says that she goes out spreading the pro proclaiming the good news, right? To all that were waiting for the redemption of Israel, the consolation of Israel, the messianic hope, but he has now arrived. The Old Testament prophets had spoken of the appearance of Christ in the, Messiah, in the temple. They spoke of Jesus in the temple. They knew that they were witnesses. At this point, um, Simeon, and, um, and, and Anna knew right here that they, what they were witnessing was the Old Testament pro word, prophetic words of the Lord now coming to fruition, now have been birthed, been brought to life. Because the Messiah, right, the consolation of Israel has now been born. He's arrived. He's here. Malachi 3, 1 says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Joseph and Mary's primary intention for going to the temple was to fulfill the requirements of the law, right? Pertaining to the, the birth of Jesus. This is a divinely inspired meeting that God had prepared so that the consolation of Israel, the messianic hope, can be uh, acknowledged. So they take, again, what they now know and see, and they go and they spread this good news. Amen. I want you to know that life does not hold or pause for anybody. Mm -hmm. One thing you can never gain back in your life is time. Right. And it's precious. It's important. Right? What we do with our time, what consumes us, right? That's that, 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 that you can never get that time back. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we take our time and do the right things and make the right choices with our time. We're not guaranteed tomorrow, church. Mm -hmm. Nobody's guaranteed tomorrow. Nobody. Me, the pastor, no one. The scripture says our life is but a vapor, right? We're here today and gone tomorrow. If you're here today and even online, right? And you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal savior, I want you to know that time is running out. You don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what walking out that door holds. We're not even guaranteed our next breath. Amen? Amen. The same way that the Holy Spirit came upon Simeon and led him to the temple 
right, and revealed to him the presence of the Messiah, to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, salvation itself in the flesh is Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know something. I want you to know that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, his only son, right? That if you believe in him, the scripture says, listen to this, you should, the, 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 the ESV says you should not perish. You should not perish, you see? God's words, the words that he uses are very important. You should not perish. We're given the opportunity to spend eternity in heaven. We have to acknowledge the call and answer that call in our life. We should not perish, but have eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right? Amen. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 says, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, you know what? Let's stand. Can we stand, please? Thank you, Lord. I know everybody's tired. It's been a busy morning, right? Thank you, Lord. You know what? Let's just close our eyes, please. Every eye closed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. That word means just as if you never sinned. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. If you have not trusted Jesus, the son of the living God, as your, as your savior, God's very own Messiah, the savior of the world, who the Holy Spirit is revealing to you right here, right now. I encourage you to respond to the call. Respond to spend an eternity in heaven with our Lord. Jesus is the only means of salvation. He is the only way to spend eternity with our Heavenly Father. If that's you today and you do not know him as your Lord and personal Savior, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. And everyone can join in on this prayer so nobody's left uncomfortable. Say, dear God, I do believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins and resurrect on that third day I ask you, God, to forgive me all my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ, that was shed on the cross at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, God, for making me new. I love you, Lord. And we praise you, God, praise in, you Jesus God. Name. in Jesus' name. Jesus name amen. And amen. Amen. Thank That's you. it, guys. Dismissed. If that you. was your first time, if that was you and you, that was uh, your first time inviting the Lord into your life, I just uh, I would like to talk to you guys up here, please. So I mean, but we're done. We're done. Uh, oh yeah, Miriam. Mike first, no? Yes, Mike. You first, Mike. Yeah, I always mess that up, but that's fine. You can tell he's a preacher. He hogs up the pulpit. Hey, listen. You know what I sensed this morning? Uh, and I recited the scripture early, but, but many of you were not here. In Psalm 34, verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Now, I know there's a lot of people going through some heavy, heavy trials and tribulations right now. You know, the scripture also says, as Wayne was preaching about, all those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not just the saving of your soul, which is most important, but saved in whatever area you need God to come and, and intervene. You know, the, uh, a few days ago, or last week, we had a young lady that stayed with us 
And I have never seen anybody experience a seizure, but she had a seizure in our midst, in, a, in our home. And uh, Pat called for me. I was in the room. I came up behind the young lady and brought a chair and Pat sat her down and Pat straddled her. And as she was shaking violently, Pat just said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the Lord just came and started to calm her. And I saw this before. I've heard of this happening before, and I've seen it before, that sometimes you don't have the words, but you just need to call out to Jesus. Amen. And you know, sometimes there are seasons in our lives that we go through. But keep this scripture in mind. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So what we're going through sometimes, we just hold on to that. The Lord said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. The scripture even says that he made darkness his secret place. So Jennifer and John, I know you're going through a season, a dark one, but Jesus said that even in that, his secret place is there for you. Amen. Bridget, I know you got news of losing another family member this morning. You know what? Well, then there's just an awesome call on your life if God knows that you can endure and take these things on. Because you're on fire for God as it is. So there's just so much more in store for you. And I know there's many others that are in here. Dee lost her husband a couple of years ago, and she just loves God. And her husband was just a precious man. And I can imagine that he is missed. However, one day you'll see him again. Amen. But not yet, right? Not yet. Amen. Thank you, Father. Lord, I, I am thankful, Lord God, for the way the, the, uh, the word came forth this morning with clarity, Father God, proclaiming Jesus as Lord and Savior. God, for those, Lord God, that have never asked them into their lives and prayed that prayer. Father, I, I pray, Lord God, that you, Lord, would draw them, Father, into your kingdom that they would know the presence of God, that they would know the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we bless you, and we ask you to bless the food and the fellowship, Father God. Uh, we know you will, Lord. Thank you for your presence in this room. Thank you for your presence in our lives, Lord God. Thank you that you're with us always, God, till the end of the age. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Miriam's going to come up yes. and share something. Thank you.